Hi, my name is Sarah Burroughs. I'm a master's student at the Adler School of Professional Psychology, and I've run numerous groups during my practicum at Vancouver Coastal Health, and then here at the Mood Disorders Association of British Columbia. I'm going to be talking a little bit about stress today, um, and a little bit about anxiety and how those things can tie in together to give us a lot more pressure in our lives than we really normally would want. So the thing about stress and anxiety is that anxiety is a part of our everyday lives. Everybody experiences it, it doesn't matter who you are. Some people have a little bit of a higher threshold for handling anxiety and being able to tolerate it. So for some people, events might happen that sort of put pressure on them and they can sort of let it roll off their backs a little bit more than other people. For some of us, our threshold for anxiety is normally really high, but then after a few occurrences of difficult experiences or trauma or something that sort of puts more pressure on us than we're used to, our threshold can be lowered. And I think it's important for everybody to learn different sort of skills of coping with anxiety because the more we learn how to cope and the more we integrate those skills into our daily lives, the better equipped we are to deal with stress and anxiety in the future. And we know that it's going to happen. It's an inevitability, really. Um, I like to talk a lot about how our thoughts influence our stress levels and, in turn, the general anxiety that we feel in our day-to-day -day lives. A lot of people learn how to think in ways that are sort of negative, and we have automatic negative thoughts that can really put a damper on our moods and our behaviors and create a self-perpetuating cycle. So sometimes, when a few negative events happen and we kind of um, look at those events as having something to do with us or as our fault or as something that happened to us more than other people, we can start to view the world through a little bit of a negative lens. And the more we look at the world in a negative lens, the more our actions and our moods are going to be reflected by that. And the more our actions and moods are reflected by that sort of negative view, the more negative events are likely to happen to us or the more likely we are to perceive things as negative. So part of handling stress and anxiety is learning to modify the way we look at the things that happen to us in the world. Learning how to kind of look at things as less extreme or less black and white and maybe a little bit less negative or having to do with us than they really are. And in doing that, our behaviors often change as well. It doesn't happen overnight, but we can sort of start to look at, um, the more we look at things as being more positive or less personal to us, the more our behavior will reflect a more optimistic or less extremely negative way of being in the world. Our interactions with others might improve, we might take greater risks and therefore gain more rewards, and we might take the failures or the difficult circumstances that we encounter less personally and be less likely to assume that they're going to happen more and more in the future. Mindfulness is a really great component of handling stress and anxiety. It's less focused on cognitive behavioral therapy, which looks a lot at actions, behaviors, and emotions and thoughts, and it's more focused on how we deal with our stress and the things that are happening in the present. Mindfulness isn't about suppressing negative feelings or trying to pretend that everything's okay or trying to be more optimistic or happy. It's just about accepting our feelings and our experiences as they are in the moment without judgment. And I think that's a really key part of dealing with stress and anxiety, especially in a world where we're often told how we should feel, what we should think, and how we should behave in response to certain circumstances. So mindfulness has a lot to do with just paying attention to ourselves and our inner state in the moment. We learn how to tune into our feelings and our body, our physical sensations, as well as what's happening to our mood and our emotions as it comes along and as those emotions disappear. In doing so, we're told to sort of notice what we're experiencing without going into the past or worrying too much about the future and just being present with those feelings as they are and letting them come and pass without trying to force them either way. So it's kind of like a river. And our emotions are a river and we're just, instead of being a river bank then building a dam and trying to make the water go this way or that, we're letting it flow over us without judgment and without trying to make it something that it's not. And in doing so, a lot of research has found that those emotions can be have less of an impact or be less um, detrimental to how we feel and how we behave in the moment because l noticing something like that takes away some of its power. So if we're experiencing stress or anger or sorrow or something like that, um, rather than trying to change it or make it something that it isn't, just accepting it, noticing it, acknowledging it, 
sort of create some room for those emotions to sort of take run their course and for more positive or more um, you know better more adaptive emotions to come into play as well a lot of exercises that we'll learn that I like to teach in mindfulness have to do with uh, tuning into our bodies in the moment and really paying attention to our surroundings. So it doesn't even have to be just about how you're feeling, but it can also just be about what's happening in the room around you. The sounds, um, what you see, what you hear, what you feel in your body, those things can really help bring us back to the present. And stress and anxiety is often caused by worrying about events that have happened in the past that we have no, no opportunity to change or things that we're afraid will happen in the future. So people often worry and ruminate about what ifs and you know ideal scenarios and how they're going to keep bad things from happening in their futures or worrying about repeating past mistakes. And in doing so, we really lose the ability to function in the present and to honor our experiences as they come along rather than always worrying about the next thing that's going to happen and always trying to plan for the next catastrophe because the truth is bad things and you know difficulties and challenges are always going to arise in our lives and we can't predict everything so it's really important that while we plan for those things in moderation we also take the time to enjoy what's happening and really experience what's happening to us in the present because that helps to make us more effective for dealing with challenges in the future a huge part of learning how to deal with stress and anxiety is learning how to expose yourself to stressful situations or situations that elicit your anxiety without doing some of the responses that might come naturally to you. So as we know, humans have developed the fight or flight response in response to whatever stressors come about and that's something that gave us an evolutionary advantage over the years. So when we were cavemen, it was really easy for us to to sort of figure out what to do when we were faced with a really high threat situation. So say a lion came along. Humans knew that they either had to run away or fight the lion, and it was very clear cut. There was really no middle ground there. The lion's either gonna eat you or you're gonna find a way to avoid being eaten. But now, things are a little bit different. Our bodies still respond physiologically to stress and anxiety the same way that they did when we had our ancestors um, living as nomads, basically. But now, the situations that are causing us stress a lot of the time aren't really life or death. They just feel like that for us physically. So while we may get really sweaty, um, our hearts may beat really fast, and we get hot and anxious when we're faced with something really stressful or a high pressure situation, our lives aren't physically in danger. But it feels very, very upsetting for us a lot of the time. And part of learning how to deal with that um, those feelings now in the, in the present are learning how involve learning how to sort of modify the way we look at these situations and learning how to look at things as less extreme than they really are or less um, catastrophic or less black and white and also learning how to take those situations less personally one of the really um, more popular things that have come into play over the last 30 years in helping people deal with stress and anxiety has been the idea of exposure. So helping to expose people to the things that cause them stress. A really common response to fear and anxiety, which often go hand in hand, is avoidance or over planning or ruminating about what's causing us fear. So a lot of people will really avoid whatever it is that stresses them out out of the fear for what it might mean. So let's say you really don't like checking your bank statement and that has to do with the fear that you're going to look at it and you're going to see a much lower amount in your bank than you thought that you had in your account and you're going to start worrying that you're never going to have more money and you're going to lose your house or you're going to be poor or you know you're disappointing everyone in your family so let's say that all these thoughts come into your in your mind just when you check your bank statement the logical thing for some people in their minds might be to just not look at their bank statement and that's what we would call avoidance. So you're avoiding the thing that's causing you stress and fear um, in an effort to try to keep your emotional state more stable and to avoid those really uncomfortable feelings that come when we feel really anxious and aroused. So that might even include physical sensations such as a really quickly beating heart, um, flushing, clamminess, and there's this the strong desire to escape. 
So one of the things that really help people in learning how to modify their stress and anxiety to levels where they can cope with it more easily is learning how to face those things that cause us stress without avoiding them and without reacting in ways that really just aren't helpful for us. So um, let's say let's say you don't like public speaking. I mean this is a classic example that I think a lot of people can relate to. Um, learning how to speak in front of other people is really really difficult at first but if you people that face that fear will find that over time as they speak in front of more people and they engage in more public speaking opportunities they start to you know their bodies start to it and their minds start to adapt to those really uncomfortable feelings that they're confronted with at first so our bodies can only really stay in that really highly anxious state for so long before they start to acclimatize to it we're very very adaptable so after about the first five minutes, you know, your heart might be beating out of your chest if you're scared of public speaking. Um, you might feel like you're going to pass out. It might be really, really scary. And part of you might just want to run away as part of that fight or flight response that humans naturally have. But over time, if you stick with it, which, you know, most people will when sort of put in that situation as a way of coping with their anxiety, um, sticking with it helps your body learn that that situation really isn't a threat that nothing really catastrophic is going to happen to you. Even if people know that you're nervous when you're public speaking, um, they probably aren't thinking about as much as you are, and your body will sort of notice, and your mind will notice that nothing really life or death is happening, and slowly you'll notice that, you know, your heart rate slows down, you sort of are thinking less about what you might look like to other people, and you may be less anxious. And so a lot of dealing with stress and anxiety has to do with slowly um, and not too quickly, but slowly exposing ourselves to those situations and people or places or whatever it might be that cause us stress and anxiety and learning how to cope with those feelings in more adaptive ways so that we can confront those situations in the future without feeling as anxious as we did before.